Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Amit. I'm the creative director for Promo. Um, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be giving you an overview of Promo AI, how it works, insights into my workflow a little bit, a few examples, and tips. I have allowed Q&A, so please mute yourself now if you're not, but feel free to ask questions on the webinar chat during this presentation. And um, yeah, let's just dive into it. So um, we all know content is king and video rules that. It's the queen of content. It's the key to engaging with your audience. And we know that creating content, especially video content, can be quite a hassle. It takes a bit of time. It costs a lot of money to produce. And what Promo AI attempts to offer users is an easy way to ideate and create engaging video content at a fraction of cost. Um, it helps with ideation, with the production of video content, with the scheduling and publishing all in one tool. And today, what we're going to be reviewing is the basics of creating videos, how to create videos, how to publish and download, how to edit videos using two tools. One is the new uh, super cool feature that we have. It's called the chat editor. I'm going to show you a little bit how to work that. And the other is using Promo's classic editor or classic tool. And then we're going to talk a little about, about um, kind of like insights into branding, footage selection, text styling, a little bit of design and adapting for ratios. And I will leave more room for questions at the end. So let's get into it. This is promo.com. This is our main website. As a Promo AI user, you have access to all the ready-made templates that we have on our website. There's over 4,000 templates and a vast variety of industries. Um, but today we're gonna be talking about Promo AI. You can access Promo AI through the Create New button at the top. Simply press it and start with Promo AI or go to your workspace to your Promo AI Planner workspace. This is an overview of all your Promo AI videos um, arranged by date. As you see, I've deleted everything so we can create new videos. I have done a few videos here for later on, but we're on today's date. This is July 30. Um, so to generate videos, you can, again, go to this Create New button and start with Promo AI or press the Generate AI Videos button here. It leads you to this short little workspace. Now, it kind of remembers your last settings, so it already pushed me through to the second screen. But if it's your first time, you'll be starting at this screen. Now, you have a few options here. Um, the first option is simply um, generating with your website. So for today's uh, test case, I have chosen the agency, which is a real estate agency featured on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And um, so what I do is, let's say this is my business. I simply come here, I copy my website domain, I go to Promo AI, and I insert it here. I press generate to go to the next stage. And what it does is it already fetches my business name, my description, my logo and watermark, and company colors. Now, what I do suggest doing here is reviewing the description because the description for your website and the description for creating videos might vary a little bit. Um, by the way, I am recording this session. So if you wanna go back to watch it, I will be uploading it tomorrow to our YouTube channel, just so you know you can come back to review this or any of our previous webinars. So I do have this little like formula that I like to do in the description pane, which is basically business name, location, category and or niche and target audience. So for example, whoops, um, I would, for this description, I would write something like a real estate agency in California. 
So that's uh, the business name is already here, the agency, yeah. Um, in California, specializing in uh, luxury real estate. And let's say my target audience is uh, for newlyweds, okay? And um, and and that that helps me create better videos. Before you press generate, you want to choose the amount of videos and the dates that you want to schedule them on. Now, you don't have to be like specific about the dates. You can always change that later before publishing. But you can choose to create up to thirty videos in one batch. Um, I suggest not creating thirty because it's just a, like a lot of videos to go through and edit and tweak a little bit. So I like to do like five, six, seven, up to like 14. I do like a week or two usually. And then you can move them around in the schedule later. So you can either choose the amount of videos you want here, or you can choose a start date and an end date, or you can choose um, it, to do um, daily or custom. And custom means that basically you can choose random dates along the calendar. Um, I'm gonna leave it from today and I'm gonna do five videos. This is what we can do. Before I go actually to do this, I wanna show you another thing you can do with this generate feature. And it's not doing videos by your business website domain, but by a specific topic. So for example, again, if I was the agency and I wanna do videos about a certain topic, and this is where other things really cool come in, I don't exactly know what my topic would be. So I like to use other tools. There's a lot of really cool um, free AI tools. This is Gemini, it's Google's uh, language model AI. And I typed here before, give me 10 topic ideas for content videos for a global luxury real estate agency called The Agency based in Beverly Hills. And then it gave me a bunch of ideas. Um, I really like uh, investing in global real estate. So I just copy this and I put it in here. Again, press generate. Now, when you put a topic, it's still in beta. So when you put a topic, it actually doesn't scrape your website. So you have to manually add the description. If you have one that's more than this, the business name and your logos. Um, but I mean, if, if you've already done at least one video through your website, your logos will be saved here. Okay. So just going back to it, two ways to generate videos by your business domain or personal domain or any domain for that matter, or by a topic. Um, so I'm going to go back. I actually created these videos for the topic a few minutes ago, so we're going to see them later, but I'm going to go back and do the agency by videos starting today. I'm going to put in the description, like I said before, business name, location, category, niche, and um, and uh, audience, I'm gonna choose the colors. I, I wanna change this color. I don't like this dark gray, I want it white. And instead of this one, I'm actually gonna do a dark gray. So this is a master color, the red, and then the second one is a white. So you usually want two colors that contrast each other. I fear that if I would have left here the dark, the, the light gray, light gray text on a red background or vice versa might not be very legible. So that's why, I mean, I'm mindful of changing that. It might be good brand colors. Oh, let me just skip Your it. videos are being created. Once they're finished, you'll be able- I love the narrator on this uh, educational video. Um, so while this video is um, is rendering, what we actually do, is um, we take content from your website. So if you've entered a website like now the agency, we read the website, we read the topics, we kind of like prepare that we aggregate all the info and kind of like create a marketing strategy. Now that marketing strategy is better laid out when you do more videos rather than less, but still, so we kind of want to 
create a few content videos, a few marketing videos, maybe a product video. And uh, maybe if, if these dates fall on like a certain uh, event, then maybe a greeting. If it's like Christmas during those days, then we do a Christmas greeting for users, et cetera. Um, after aggregating all the info and creating kind of like marketing strategy, the system writes script for these videos. Like I said, content videos, sales videos, listicle videos. And then we go to edit them. Um, the back end, oh, it was actually kind of fast. Here are the videos. We select the most relevant footage from Getty Images. We usually try to select video footage, but we can sometimes replace with uh, with images if if we feel they're more relevant. We add it all together, uh, add music, add the textiles, the animations, everything to it, and then also add a copy like for the post that you will later post. So you see, it gives you a title for the video and the copy for like the Facebook, Instagram post or whatever. Um, so let's see these videos together. I, I can already see it took the website's fonts and brand colors, right? Like we said, it also takes the font so to keep it on brand. And um, let's see the videos it created. I just pressed randomly the press. Okay, not sure if you can. Uh, hear the music. I'm actually need to turn this on. I think. Yeah, not sure. Anyway, um, so this is video number one. Another video, luxury outdoor living. So this is the listicle video I see. It's a little bit of content to put on your Facebook, Instagram, TikTok feeds, keep users engaged. Now, um, let's just see another one uh, just for measure. Now, we make the default ratio square, but you can easily just press, for example, on this vertical to uh, change the video's ratio to a vertical ratio, and then it saves it this way if you want to post it as real or whatever. Um, so this video is automatically edited and designed back to, uh, to, to fit a vertical format video. Um, once you, you start reviewing the videos, there's a lot of things you can do. First of all, you can download the video to your computer. You can publish or schedule it to publish by pressing the schedule to publish. This opens your uh, scheduling uh, pane. Now, you will have to connect your uh, social media accounts. I have done this already, so I'm just going to choose, for example, my Instagram account. I can choose to post it as a post or as a reel. You see the post copy is already brought into here, um, but obviously you can change it and edit it however much you want. You can choose your square version back here if you want, or even create the wide version from here. You can publish the post now or schedule to publish later. Um, it's currently scheduled for, I can see August 1st, but you can choose any day, any time and press schedule. Um, I'm going to cancel this for now. I don't want to schedule it. And this is the preview of this reel. Now, if you've chosen the video and you want to schedule and post it to more than one social media, it's not a problem. You press duplicate over here. It asks you where else you want to schedule it. So I want to schedule it now. On uh, This was the Instagram on my promo Facebook page. I want to change one word here, and I want the Facebook to be the square format. Oops. It can't be a reel, obviously, because it's already, I scheduled a reel, so it changed it to a post, but on Facebook, it's gonna be a square post. On Instagram, it's gonna be a vertical reel. That's what I decided. And you can keep duplicating for as many social media accounts that you have. I'm gonna go back. I'm not gonna schedule this right now. Um, 
and then you press publish, you review it, and obviously it publishes. Um, you can also, so I wrote, uh, did I write? I wrote for newlyweds and pet friendly, uh, so it did a pet friendly video as well. I do want to show you now how, because, okay, I'm, I'm just going to say, the AI feature is amazing, and you get a great five, seven videos. The chance of those five to seven videos being 100% perfect is not great. I mean, we're still early days in AI. So what I use it mostly is for like 80% of the beginning of the work. It's an ideation, and it gives me great ideas and great texts and great footage. But I still want to tweak these videos a little bit. Um, so we can tweak them, as I said, um, with our chat uh, editor. You can access it through this like kebab menu um, by pressing edit, uh, uh, chat to edit, sorry, over here, my bad, or chat to edit over here. And what this does is it opens up a way to basically communicate by text with the editor and asking what to do. Um, so you can change the content of the video through here. You can ask it to change the text, for example. Change first text to hello. And then it should just, right? So it change, you can change any one of the texts you want just by chatting with the editor. You can change, um, you can adjust the length, like ask it to make the texts longer or shorter. Um, you can boost your content. I haven't even seen this video yet, but you can ask it add statistics to this video. So it probably did like three things you can do with your pets, but now it can add maybe like a few relevant stats. Oh, you it does work the statistics, and probably this video doesn't have any stats to add it to it right now. Let's try it in another video. I'm going to ask it to add data and statistics to this video. Um, so let's see. I don't, I, I haven't seen it before. I don't really think it worked. We're going to try it again in a second. You can ask it to focus on your audience, like, uh, focus on user pain points or benefits. Let's see if it does that. Add product benefits to the text. So with high ROI, he added that text. grows your wealth and enhances your lifestyle. So it does a little bit of tweaking on the text. You can do that straight to here. You can uh, kind of like goof off a little bit, for example, rewrite it, ask to rewrite in a different tone of voice. So I'm going to ask it to rewrite as Yoda. Too high ROI it is. You shall have. So, but obviously you can ask it to uh, talk in a more, more sales voice or more down to earth or whatever. This is just funny when you do it with yoga, with a Yoda kind of like tone and style. And uh, you can 
change the language. So for example, you can create one clip for your English speaking audience and one for your, your Spanish speaking audience. Whoops, I did Spancy. Yeah, it actually knows my, it even knows my error was Spanish. So you can create videos in various languages and you can kind of like target in different audiences with different languages if that's something you need. And you can also tell the AI editor to add a clear call to action at the end, for example, directing direct users to my website or to my store or give them my phone number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can also batch all these prompts together. So you can ask it to make the text longer, add data, change to Spanish and the tone of voice in one single prompt. I just show them separately for now. Um, um, so that is as far as changing the content with this uh, chat editor. I'm gonna discard and open a new one. By the way, I did create a video, a few videos before we started, um, which was with this, investing in global real estate. So we can see like maybe one or two of these. So this is creating by topic instead of by, ve by website. So this is more content oriented topic videos. I'm going to open the chat editor again. And uh, apart from content and text, I can ask it to edit visuals, for example. So I can ask it, let's say I want to change this first clip. Change first clip to Spaceman. Now, you can, when you ask it to change video, it won't do it automatically, but it will open Getty Images Vast um, footage library. So you can start choosing. You can just write change first clip and then it will open things randomly or by the keyword, the, the clip in the video was searched for. But because I added Spaceman, it already opens a Spaceman videos here. Spaceman Sky Outdoors, it even wrote. I can ask, now I can browse through this these footages and choose anyone I want to replace. I can edit my search. So I want a dog instead of a Spaceman. I can choose between video and photo. And this library basically is the Getty Images entire video library, millions of bit footage and, uh, and images. But I can also go to my uploads. Now, if you've already uploaded things before, you'll find them here, or you can upload your own content to this video if you want. Any content you upload, whether it be videos or photos, will be saved to your promo library for future use, future use in any of your videos. So I'm going to go here, I'm gonna change the first clip to this cute puppy. Obviously it has nothing to do with the content. Um, you can change the music here. You can ask it by uh, type of music. So change it to fun music, make it the music more sincere, look for a Latin beat, et cetera, et cetera. And you can ask to change, move the text to bottom of screen. Move the, let's say capture. And you can move uh, the captions. You see it moved it down here. Basically, you can think of this video as it kind of has nine positions. So you can ask it to move to the center, center left, center right, top right, top left, bottom right, et cetera. Um, yeah, so these are the things you can do with the chat editor, which is very, very cool. It really saves time. But if you're kind of like a sponge maker, you want to manually um, kind of like get into it and edit these, then you can edit any video with our classic editor. Basically, you press this kebab menu and you go to edit video. Uh, I accidentally pressed download. So 
it's kind of like rendering the video now. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. So um, we were editing this video, I guess. Um, I'm going to edit this video and it will open up the old classic editor, um, well, the classic editor, the manual editor. Any changes you do in the manual editor will be saved to your AI video. The only thing about editing in this classic editor is once you've taken it and edit it in the classic editor, you can't re-edit with the chat to edit because chat doesn't really know what you've done manually. It's only, it only knows what it, it did to the video at the beginning. So if you choose to go to the manual editor, you just can't re-edit afterwards in the, in the chat editor. That's the only thing. So it's opening, it's still loading for a second. Um, what I do want to show here basically is the layout. So this is a pretty straightforward editor. Um, you can choose the edit feature, the media feature, and the music uh, to show choices on the side. The bottom, the bottom part is the footage. You can choose each one of them. And above each footage is a text, uh, a caption. Um, my computer is kind of stuckish. All right. Okay, so to edit any one of the captions, you basically have to select it here from the timeline bar at the bottom. To edit or change any one of the footage of the visuals, clips, then you kind of like press to edit any one of those. What you can do is manually change the text. You can position it anywhere on the screen. I, again, I like to use this nine position because it, it's, it's visually, it looks better if it's exactly in the center. If you move it manually, you, you might put it a little bit off the center. I mean, you might want to do that if you want, but usually it's just better aligned when it's in one of these positions. Um, you can change the text alignment right, left, center. You can change the animation and the design of each of the each of the captions. So you can choose from any one of a lot of designs that we have ready. Um, one thing I do recommend is not choosing, visually it's not good, it's a little, it, it's a little, it gets clogged or it's a little busy if you choose more than one or two animations per video. So I wouldn't start playing with each of the animations because it, it kind of looks weird when you choose different ones. I do like to choose one specific animation type for like what I call the intro scene or, or the title scene. And then I usually stick either with the same one or with an, another one for all the middle captions. So I might have three animation designs per video, one for the intro, one for the outro, and one for all the middle parts. It, it comes out as a cleaner video. It looks better when you kind of like stick to one design and one color, by the way. I mean, you can change it a little bit, but as a rule of thumb, sticking to one design principle per video is better for the visual for the video itself. Now, as far as choosing visuals, for example, this visual, I mean, I don't love it. Uh, I want to replace it. So I stand above the visual itself. I can replace, duplicate, trim it, or even give it a color filter. Um, so I'm going to change this visual and I'm going to tell you why. It's a little busy. I mean, I feel that there's not enough room for text. There's a lot of things going on in the video and we have to remember most of the videos we make are gonna be displayed on a small phone screen and it's gonna have text added to it and music and whatever. So the busier the frame is, it might look good. I mean, 
on a, on a 60 inch TV. And if that's what you're making your video for to screen on your TV in your office, that's great. Then you can choose different things. But if you're doing small, tiny videos for social media, a good thing is to choose like very focused visuals, right? Visuals that have either one person, like this is pretty focused. There's like one person and the background is way in the back and it's kind of blurry. I love it. This is also not bad because I can already see I can put, uh, I can choose to put my text here at the top, which is kind of dark. So the text will stand out. But it, so I'm going to choose, for example, I don't know, this one. What This is a nice visual too, by the way. So it replaced my visual. Now I have my text here. So you see, it's much cleaner than the text I had before. And if I move the text to the bottom part, then it's also in a dark place. I can, I think these two lines are a little much. So I want to break it down better. This is also a good thing to do with your text, kind of like look at it. So it's a little bigger. Obviously, this isn't the right style, I think, for this. Another thing you can do, um, and this is related to text, and this is very important. Your video has to be beautiful and, and it has to look good, but more importantly, it has to be legible. Your message has to come across. So I usually do as much as I can to see that the text stands out. If, if the frame is busy or it's not dark enough, choosing one of the textiles that doesn't have a background might be a little hard. If you do want to do that, you can actually um, select the caption and add kind of like a color filter it. So you add a little bit of black to the frame, for example, which makes the text stand out even more. That's a great trick. Once you do that, by the way, so as to have kind of like a homogenic video, you can apply that filter to all the clips a little bit. It shouldn't change it much. I usually, I like to add a little bit of black. For example, this one isn't really legible. So either move it or, you know, choose a textile with a background. I mean, I think it's much more important to be able to read the message and understand the video um, than not, obviously. Um, as far as colors go and textiles go, and even text positions, I wouldn't move them in frames too much. Kind of, again, it creates kind of like a busy feeling, like things are out of sync a little bit. I usually try to choose, as I said, one, two, three textiles. And again, try to keep the text position in the same place for most of the screens. Again, the title screen can be different. And the outro screen can be different as well because they're like those are like the edges. That's fine. Um, in the outros, by the way, we have different designs in the textiles. This is mainly to convey your call to action uh, or if you have any sales or discounts. What I like to do with the outro is rather have it longer than not. If it's too short, the video kind of ends while you're scrolling on your Instagram feed. The video kind of ends and moves to the next one. But if you leave it, you'll you'll get a, a, a pretty long time with your company details on that screen. Even if it's frozen, it's it's a good thing on on general, generally to have your website, your offer remain on the screen for a while. So I like to have this at least four or five seconds long, but you can have it. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's even a little bit longer because if somebody finished watching the video, then that's fine. They can keep scrolling. Um, also add a clear call to action. I can see this did like a website twice, but I would do visit us today or call for a free, uh, um, um, for a free meeting uh, or whatever, something that kind of like, moves users to some sort of action. Um, another important thing about this is words per frame. Two things, don't put too many words in one frame. It, when people see a lot of words, it's just, it's it's not fun to come in and read. If, if this was like six rows long, I would just move back away from it. Try to separate, not have more than, let's say 20, even a little bit less words per one frame. And the other thing is leave enough time 
for reading the words. A good rule of thumb is two words equals one second, not counting words like a, the, are, whatever, because we kind of like don't read those words, we skip over them. So exclusive properties, attracting fears, competition among buyer, this would be one, two, three and a half seconds. At least I would give this four seconds for this frame. And it, I mean, it, I'd rather it be half a second longer than half a second shorter and people not being able to read that last word. It's really annoying. Um, again, know your audience. If you're talking to, uh, if your audience is like 16 year olds, then you can have tiny fonts and leave them for like two seconds because they kind of like skip over everything. But if your users are a little bit older than that, give them the fonts, make them a little bigger. Imagine that this screen you're seeing is twice the size of what people are going to see in, on their mobile phones. Remember to always add your logo if you haven't already. Uh, you can play with the logo. You make it uh, roundish. You can change the color. This logo is already red, but basically, I mean, we can see that this logo is kind of like on this guy's face. So I would either move the screen behind him so that it's not on his face or move the logo position. Um, the difference, by the way, between a watermark and a logo is the logo will only appear in the outro in the last frame of the video. And the watermark during the video, um, you can play with its opacity. You can make it like a little bit more see-through, um, a little bit less color, make it more black and white if you want. And if your logo is PNG, which means it doesn't have a background, then it's even better because you're only going to see like the text itself over the video. Um, yeah, I think I covered most of the things. I'm going to save this video and it's going to save it back to my promo planner page. Uh, I'm going to go there through here. Um, so one last thing, you, you have a monthly view on your promo planner. You can put it on a weekly view if you want. Um, if you have more than one video per day, they will be stacked one on top of each other. And the top video is always the last one you've generated. So yeah, it brought this video back to here from the same place. Um, so they'll be stacked by pressing on any one of those. You'll see the other ones. The latest one will be on the top. Um, you can kind of, if you have a lot of videos and then you're managing a few brands, then you can actually yeah, decide to show only some of them. Uh, you can filter your videos by draft, schedule, publish, or by social media. And over here, you can access a few educational videos I've created on how to do like each one of the parts of the things we've been talking about today, how to create, how to edit, publish, replace clips, caption design, each of them separately with a little bit of um, uh, more insight into those things. Yeah, so uh, we have a YouTube channel, promo.com. This is it. You can find all the webinars, this webinar from tomorrow, you can find it. More educational videos on how to tackle promo AI. And uh, that's it. Unless, uh, do we have any questions? All right. I guess no questions. Um, thank you again for joining today. I hope I've helped a little bit with understanding uh, promo and things you can do. Um, please go to the YouTube channel, view a little more things, view this webinar, and contact us with any more questions related to this.